Hey there, welcome in. And thanks for tuning into season two of I Heart STEM. We're excited to be back and have some new concepts and topics that we think you'll enjoy. Speaking of topics, today I'm excited to nerd out about the science of an out of this world experience, the dust that is on the moon. Believe it or not, this dust is one of the reasons that space missions have failed. You know the drill, let's break it down. Four questions, each answered one minute or less. Here we go. You're watching I Heart STEM. Today we'll tackle one STEM topic I learned from experts. Just four key questions with each answer under one minute or less. The dust is different because the moon has a very different environment than Earth. Earth has a very dense atmosphere with air being the lower part of the atmosphere that we breathe and the gases in the atmosphere are held in place by gravity. Being dense means molecules are always bumping into each other. The moon is what's called an exosphere, which means it has gases that are not very dense, so very rarely bump into each other. Now let's bring in gravity. The moon's gravity is about a sixth, so a fraction of that of the Earth. With gravity, the higher the mass, the more gravity it has. Putting this together, because the gravity is low and the gases are not dense, the result is like when you drop cooking flour and the flour goes everywhere. Now picture if the flour stayed there and spread in the air. That's what happens to the dust on the moon. In addition, the dust itself is formed mostly from meteoroids broken down into smaller pieces by radiation. These meteoroids are made up of different elements, depending on where you are on the moon, giving the dust a lot of variability. There's two big differences between the dust particles on the moon and on Earth. The sharpness of the dust is problematic because, well, it's sharp. Have you ever broken a piece of glass on your counter, thought you cleaned it up, and then you brushed off the counter and got a cut from a tiny piece of glass that was left behind? Lunar dust is basically like having dust made up of super small, sharp glass. Because of this, it can destroy spacesuits and other objects that rub up against it. Maintaining an electrostatic charge is another problem of this dust. Electrostatic charge means that an object has an imbalance of electrons that cause it to move in reaction to objects without touching them. It's like if you've ever tried to push ends of a magnet together and they repel without touching. Lunar dust particles tend to be a type called insulated, which means anything with electrons, an astronaut, a lander, will cause it to move. And because the moon isn't grounded like Earth, they will keep the charge until it encounters something to exchange electrons with, staying extra charge. Things with a lot of charge stick on objects and aren't easy to brush off. In addition, the moon's exosphere also plays a role in creating even more charge because there's no water vapor to discharge electrons like on Earth, and it doesn't block the exposure from the sun. So on certain parts of the moon, the dust can become so charged, it could actually shock astronauts. <laughs> Barely made it. There's so many factors that play impacting the dust that engineers and scientists say it is easier to go to the moon to test than to try to recreate all the factors together. So instead they focus on recreating one area in a lab and then pull together a full picture using simulation and other programs. Testing is focused on isolating one of three categories. Optical testing focuses on testing the dust in relation to light, which could include assessing reaction to thermal properties like radiation or seeing how the dust itself reflects light, which could reveal mineral elements. Mechanical testing is about testing the physicality of the dust. Given it is a very abrasive material, they need to see how certain materials that we would send to the moon will be impacted by the dust. Electrical is focused on testing how the dust reacts to electric fields. Very key because of the electrostatic nature and the susceptibility for it to interfere with what astronauts are trying to accomplish on the moon in a given scenario. Interestingly enough, some testing is actually done when people go to the moon. For example, a simulation program can say, this is how we think a crater is formed. But because the physics of a crater is both known and unknown, it may be better to just collect data when a commercial lander goes up to space rather than to try to recreate. Scientists and engineers are making strides. They are somewhat still dealing with an unknown enemy. They don't know the exact mineral composition of the dust they will encounter in a specific situation, which makes it hard to develop an approach to deal with the dust. Orbital stands do collect data though, so they are able to get some guidance. NASA has an approach that other companies are adopting as well. Avoid, remove, tolerate. Avoid having your dust in the system. Remove the dust if you can. Find ways to tolerate it if you can't do either of the first two. In terms of removing the dust, there's a few cool techniques that are in the process of being deployed. Electrodynamic dust shield is when a set of electrodes are used to create a current that creates an electric field to repel the dust. The idea is that because the dust is repelled, it won't stick to things. This is actually being used on the current space expedition, Blue Ghost Mission 1, which just landed on the moon on March 2nd. Electrostatic removal system is a concept that's in testing, where electrodes are placed into a spacesuit. Given the electrostatic nature of the dust, the electrodes and the lunar dust have a reaction which repels the dust off the suit. Hey everyone, I'm Jeremy. I'm an expert on lunar dust and the lunar surface. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Now you know a little bit more about the subject and there's some really cool stuff happening in the industry for this year and the next couple of years. We got robotic landers, rovers, human landers, habitats. So 
you know, try and keep in touch. Try and keep an eye out for these things. There's some really cool stuff coming on. Big thank you to our expert, Jeremy. What a cool way to apply your STEM skills. Don't forget to look up how they are using electrodynamic dust shield on Blue Ghost Mission 1. See you next week.